Hi everyone, this is Hong from Rise Lab UC Berkeley. Very glad to have this chance to talk about our recent work on task scheduling for serverless analytics. So we know that serverless is becoming an exciting new paradigm for cloud computing. Many cloud providers are providing serverless platforms such as AWS Lambda, Google Cloud Functions, and so on. And at its very core, serverless provides both fast scaling and fine-grained billing, which enable users to easily scale up and down any number of workers or functions at any time. And this makes serverless a great fit for distributed analytics workloads. And as we can see from this timeline of the development of serverless applications, back in the year of 2014, people start with simple single stage functions such as web serving and IoT applications. And recently, we are witnessing more and more general analytics workloads such as MapReduce and SQL-like queries on top of serverless. And many of these applications have an execution plan composed of multiple stages and each stage composed of multiple tasks. And people deploy these applications on top of serverless with two major performance goals. The first, we want the job to finish as fast as possible. And this corresponds to job completion time, or JCT for short. And second, we also want the job to cost as little as possible. And in many cases, the total cost is dominated by the total duration of all the serverless workers. And this paradigm introduces a new scaling problem for serverless users. So we know that in server-centric settings, users usually need to manage a cluster of resources among multiple jobs. As a result, the scaling policy needs to focus on inter-job scaling to optimize cluster-wise metrics, such as cluster utilization and the fairness across jobs. In contrast, in serverless settings, resource allocation across jobs is totally handled by the serverless platform. So users no longer need to worry about inter-job scaling anymore. Instead, since each job is charged by its exact resource usage, the scaling policy needs to focus on intra-job scaling across tasks to optimize both JCT and cost for each individual job. As a result, here we are wondering, can existing server-centric intra-job scaling policies optimize both JCT and cost in serverless settings? To answer this question, here we have a simple map reduce example with three map tasks and three reduced tasks. The numbers inside the bars represent the duration for each task. So here one widely adopted solution is to launch tasks in a lazy manner. For example, in Spark, we can only start a task after all tasks in its upstream stages have finished. And as we can see here, doing so will introduce the barrier between the map and reduce stage, which results in a job completion time of 16 plus 15 equals to 31. And at the same time, we will get a total cost of 64, which is the aggregated duration of all these tasks. On the other extreme, we can also choose to launch tasks in an eager manner which means we can start a task as soon as any output from its upstream stages is ready. Frameworks such as MapReduce Online can work in such a manner. And by doing so, we'll get something like this. So compared to the latest scheme, now we can effectively overlap part of the reduced execution with the map stage, which reduces the completion time to 19. However, the reduced execution depends on the mapper output. And in many cases, there are part of the reduced execution for example, data aggregation, which can only start after receiving all the mapper output. As a result, some reducers may always be running at very low load since they are busy waiting for their input data. This wastes a lot of CPU resources and introduces a much higher cost. So taken together, here we observe this trade-off here. On one hand, the lazy scheme minimizes cost but introduces a much longer job completion time. On the other hand, the lazy scheme minimizes job completion time but introduces a much higher cost. In this work, we propose nimble scheduling to break this trade-off. The main idea is that by fully exploiting the flexible resource scaling of service computing, we can calculate and enforce the best launch time for each individual task. Now recall the previous MapReduce example. With nimble scheduling, we can get something like this. So reducers with heavy load can start early to minimize completion time, and reducers with light load can start late to minimize cost. And by doing so, we can get a completion time as good as an eager solution. And at the same time, we can get a cost as good as a lazy solution. So following this idea, the key question is how to calculate the optimal launch time for each task. And we find the calculation non-trivial due to the following two challenges. The first, 
Impulse gathering requires a precise description of the pipeline ability across different job stages. So we know that in many cases, a job can be described as a stage level deck. For example, a map reduced job can be uh, described as a map stage followed by a reduced stage. However, even for this simple map reduced job, there are part of the reduced execution that can be pipelined with the map stage. And there are parts that can only start after the map stage finishes. As a result, we cannot calculate the optimal task launch time without such substage level information. So the first challenge is how to describe pipeline ability at substage level. And second, we know that general analytics workloads can have complicated DAGs. So first, within a stage, tasks can consume data from multiple upstream stages. As we can see from this example, stage three will consume data from both stage one and stage two. And second, across stages, tasks can have cascading dependencies. So in this example, we have stage three, which depends on stage one and stage two. And we can further have stage five, which depends on stage three and stage four. Taken together, the second challenge is how to calculate the optimal task launch time for arbitrary DAGs. And this slide provides an overview of how Nimble addresses these two challenges. So for challenge one, we develop a STEM model to precisely capture the substage level pipeline ability. And for, stage two, for challenge two, we develop a scaling algorithm which guarantees optimal cost while being Pareto optimal between cost and JCT for arbitrary DAGs. In the next few slides, I'm going to talk about these two designs in more detail. So first, let's talk about the STEM model. So since stages are too coarse grained, the idea here is to simply break stages into finer granularities, which we call steps. A step is the largest pipelineable component within a stage. And a stage can be divided into several steps separated by pipeline breakers. A pipeline breaker is an operator that produces the first output only after all its input has been processed. For example, the right figure here shows a STEM model for a MapReduce job. As we can see here, the map stage contains only one step. This is because there's no pipeline breaker within the mapper execution. In contrast, the reduce stage has to be divided into two steps separated by a pipeline breaker. So the first step reads all the mapper output, and the second step performs a reduce operation such as a min, max, or sum. Moreover, the arrows here represent the data dependencies between steps. The black arrow here represents the data dependency within a stage. So steps connected by such black arrows must be executed sequentially because they are separated by pipeline breakers. And the red arrow here represents data dependency across stages. So steps connected by such red arrows can be pipeline. For example, when mappers are producing their output, the reducers can fetch this output at the same time. And here we call steps connected by such red arrows as parent child step pairs. Also, here we have an example to show the STEM model for a complicated SQL query in TPCBS benchmark. We find that STEM model can effectively describe pipeline ability across a wide range of applications. Next, we talk about how we address challenge two. And based on the STEM model, we start our analysis from two stage MapReduce jobs. Here's the intuition to calculate the launch time is to optimally overlap the parent child step pair based on the data produced and data consumed rate. And both rates can be estimated based on historical and online job information. So based on this intuition, we design our algorithm as follows. So first, for map tasks, we just launch them at time zero because they do not have upstream dependencies. And for reduced tasks, we calculate the optimal launch time in three simple steps. So first, we calculate the optimal task duration. And this can be calculated based on the lazy solution. And second, we calculate the optimal task lock finish time. And such optimal task finish time can, can be calculated based on the eager solution. And third, we calculate the task launch time T star as the optimal task finish time minus the optimal task duration. And we can prove that such T star ensures optimal cost and finish time for each reduced task. And next, we extend our, our analysis from map reduce to arbitrary DAX. So given the challenges for arbitrary decks we mentioned earlier, our analysis here brings some bad news and some good news. So the bad news says that it is impossible to design an algorithm that can achieve optimal cost and JCT simultaneously for arbitrary decks. And the good news is that we can actually extend the basic algorithm for MapReduce so that we can guarantee optimal cost while being Pareto optimal 
between cost and JCT. Please refer to our paper for more details. And next, to enable nimble scheduling in practice, we built Ceres, a task level scheduler for service analytics. So Ceres is composed of four design components, a step model builder, an input estimator, and a scheduling module which applies nimble scheduling, a runtime profiler which updates the input estimations. We evaluate Nimble across multiple TPCDS and big data queries. The results show that Nimble scheduling can effectively optimize both JCT and cost across all these workloads. Please refer to our paper for more evaluation results. And finally, I want to conclude the talk with three points. The first, serverless analytics introduces a new intra-job scheduling problem to optimize both JCT and cost. And second, to address this problem, we propose Nimble scheduling with a simple idea to launch each task at its right time. And third, we built Ceres, a task level scheduler for serverless analytics, which enables nimble scheduling in practice. And this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>